Traditionally speaking, marriage indicates certain notions of leaving your life behind, trying to make the other person happy and have a good life. There's no way to make someone happy. That's not it either. Life just doesn't work that way. While marriage is indeed the joining of two hearts and two souls, it's also the joining of two individuals. Two people with their own thoughts, their beliefs, and their own identities. Identities which shouldn't be lost to those traditions simply by a commitment made to love and support one another. On the contrary, marriage allows two separate individuals to collectively become greater than the sum of their parts, to be better than they were alone for themselves and for each other. These two hearts beat on their own, but the shared love allows them to also beat for one another. This is the real adventure they've chosen together, committed lives of love, respect, and support. It's been said, if love is not all, then love is nothing. This principle and its opposite collide down all the years of your breathless tale. Sam and Nick, your breathless tale is just beginning. both Samantha and Nick to say just one thing. Give me one little thing to bring to this ceremony that was personal. Something part of knowing that the other one was right for them. But I'll start with Nick and his thoughts on Samantha. Now, first of all, considering he asked me to keep this to five minutes, I expected a one word answer. Nick's not one to overplay emotion, but his comments showed that he swells with pride to be in love with her. And Samantha, well, it's your turn now. I don't know if anybody would be surprised to know that she was stressed about what she gave me in writing. It's not really a shock to any of us, but much the same, Samantha's feelings showed her desire to share a life together with the man that she admires so much. 
My expectations were so much about individual traits about each other, and yet what I found were the similarities in how you both see each other. Feelings of pride, admiration, inspiration, commitment. They share that mutual respect. They motivate each other, just being the people that they are. They both love to learn more and challenge each other to be better, but there's no telling or asking. It's simply seeing the other as the individual that they are that drives each of them to be more. I take you, Nick, to share our love and marriage. I remain my own person. While knowing well together, we have collective strength. I promise you room to breathe and encourage your dreams. Allowing you to grow. Allowing you to grow. While appreciating you just as you are. I know, sorry. What? While appreciating you just as you are. <laughs> While appreciating you just as you are. This is a marriage of equals, and with this ring, I be wed. I take you, Samantha, to share our love in marriage. I remain my own person while knowing that together we have collective strength. I promise you room to breathe and encourage your dreams, allowing you to grow while appreciating you just as you are. This is a marriage of equals, and with this ring, I thee way. If love is not all, then love is nothing. And it's opposite. If love is all, then it's everything. It's not just a word, it's an action. Not something that you say, it's something that you do. It's genuine, honest, open, compassionate. Love does not know space or time, nor does it look through jealous eyes. And in these famous words, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never dies. Samantha and Nick, you have pledged your commitment in matrimony, vowing to stand beside and support one another through all things. According to the powers vested in me by the state of New Hampshire, I pronounce you partners in life for life. Because the bride. When I was around 12 or 13, Samantha had to drive into Boston to do something or other for school. Kirsten was going with her, and my mom refused to let me spend yet another day of summer break sitting on the couch glued to the screen of my iPad. So instead, I sat in the last row of her car glued to the screen of my iPad. I spent the entire drive playing Candy Crush and eavesdropping on every word spoken between the two. They spent the entire ride talking about some boy. How Samantha knew he liked her, but wasn't sure what to do about it. They kept talking and I turned my attention back to my iPad. But then they said his name, and his name is Nick. Perhaps we should rewind a bit though. Growing up with Samantha as her older sister makes life that much more, what's the word, difficult. She is so kind, genuine, selfless, mature, giving, beautiful, and smart, that I think by the time we were born, all of the positive characteristics that typically spread themselves out between siblings had actually been taken up by her. Rude. She is my rock, my mentor, and my best friend. Samantha, you've taught me things in life without ever realizing it, and I can't thank you enough for being you. <laughs> Nick, welcome to the family. <laughs> We are so excited to welcome you to this sister trio, but completely understand if the feelings aren't mutual. Nick, I finally knew you were worthy of breaking up the three musketeers when you came over and asked the entire family if you could marry Samantha. You were nervous, your voice was shaky, and I was literally giggling in your face. I loved how thoughtful you were in making sure her whole team was there to get the approval. Bold, but endearing. Nick, you truly do make our trio a wonderful quartet, and I cannot imagine a better person for my big sister. Our favorite thing about Samantha and Nick is their ever-present, yet humbly displayed resilience. Whether it be spending weeks in the hospital, working crazy hours, getting one more degree, trying to win another pair of Yeezys, or just simply trying to have one normal conversation with us, 
There appears to be nothing that can stand in the way of these two. Their relationship has the foundation and strength well beyond their years. You two will surpass anything thrown your way. We are so excited to see where life takes you two. And George. Our Uncle Bob and Uncle Chuck are two guys we think of often and fondly. We miss them here tonight, but know they are with us in spirit. And of course, we miss our dad, Jimmy Horn. I wish I could tell you what his thoughts on this crazy world would be. The one thing I can tell you, though, is that he would be so, so proud of his Mantha. I know everyone here is, and I can feel his pride in seeing the woman you are today. And Nick, I have a funny feeling our dad would be wishing you luck on marrying this one. So with that, let's bust a move and raise a toast to Samantha and Nick. God bless. <laughs>